Can you say 4th of July? With this intonation, Alper? Yes, exactly like that. 4th of July. <laughs> 4th of July. That's pretty good. It's grilling season back home in America. And while we're here in Italy, we thought that today we would collaborate and make some Italian style dishes inspired by traditional American grilled recipes. I'm being very careful with my wording because just like how Ava gets mad if you call this carbonara, Traditional American food deserves some respect as well. Here at Alper, we are trying just to invent uh, something completely new, trying to make some uh, fusion. Some Italian-American fusion. Some American-Italian fusion. <laughs> <laughs> because Italian-American has the roots in Italy. American-Italian has oh, the roots okay, in America. Yesterday, we went to the store, and I think we have some ideas for the three dishes we're going to Hopefully not ruin today. Alper, I don't think that we can completely destroy. It's broken. It's broken. See. We're starting off with a hot dog. Okay, let's see what kind of hot dogs you guys have. Wurstel. This is how we call it the sausage. Wurstel. Okay, as an Italian. What would be like the most classic hot dog here? Suilo? Yes, this is pork. And this is the brand that makes one of the best mortadella in it. Oh, okay. I'm down. Now we gotta figure out what to do with them. Usually, I'll probably do pizza. Oh, that's right. You do the pizza with the french fries and hot dogs. You know what? Wow, those are literally fresh out of the ground. I've never seen that in my life in a grocery store. Welcome to Italy. So are you thinking that we will actually make French fries and put them on the hot dog? Maybe. Okay, but if we're going with a, like a pizza themed hot dog, we're gonna need some cheese. Una treccia, grazie. Ciao, grazie a te. All right, so we're gonna need some buns. Pane per hot dog. Now, Alper, I don't want to say we are very good in doing all the bread, except bread for a dog, which means, Alper, that is much more better, is better if we do them by ourselves. But these are più morbide. We don't trust them. I know it's kind of a sin for a lot of people to put ketchup on a hot dog, but I feel like since we're making a pizza hot dog, we need some kind of tomato sauce base. So we are going to do our uh, tomato sauce base. We'll just do straight tomato sauce on the hot dog? Because do you think that on the pizza with the dog and french fries, they put ketchup? See, my concern is that if we do like just a tomato sauce, it'll be kind of too watery for the hot dog. But we will reduce it up. Okay, me. okay, I trust you. I will reluctantly put the ketchup back. Okay, so I don't know the first thing about how a hot dog bun works. What's your strategy here? My strategy here is to make what in Italy we call panini al latte. They are soft, small uh, panini, small sandwich, and they should work with hot dogs and hamburger. Thank you for spoiling what our second recipe is going to be. <laughs> yeah, but it's the Independence Day. Everyone knows which, which the recipe are going to be. So this dough will work with both? I hope so. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> I'm adding some sugar because uh, one thing I learned in the US, that everywhere there is some sugar.
if I might make a suggestion, because this is gonna be a loaded hot dog, I would make the buns like a little extra big. I know, but right now we need, we need to let it rise. Oh, it's not ready yet? No, Harper, it's not ready. We could have just bought some hot dog buns and been done with it, but no. Now we need the perfection here. Okay, agreed. While our dough is resting, we can start to make our tomato sauce. But you gotta make it thick. I will make it thick. Yes, now we let them rise again. Yes, Arthur. So they will be very, very soft. Shoot, we didn't think to get sesame seeds. That'd be good on the burger buns. I am thoroughly impressed. You even got them to merge together just like they come in the bag. I made these on purpose. Yeah, sure. So does this mean it's French fry time? It's French fry time. Okay, well I guess the only thing left to do is cook the hot dog. Which means that it's your turn. Now, when I had the idea that I wanted to try to make some new variations of classic grilled American food, I sort of forgot that I don't own a grill here. Um, so if you're following along at home, uh, go outside and grill. But in the meantime, I'm going to cook my hot dog in a pan. <laughs> How do you use this thing? You don't know how to use it? Figure it out. Pay attention because it becomes very hot soon. Really? You're right, this gets very hot. What is happening? Okay, here goes nothing. Do you feel confident? Actually, no, because now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever cooked a hot dog in a pan. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's cooking fast, okay. When you grill, there is the smoke. That's true. I'm getting that nice smoky grilled flavor. It's done? Uh, I mean, if I go much further, I'm gonna burn it. Okay, um, back to you, Ava. What do you call this kind of braided mozzarella? Trecha. Trecha? Is it just normal mozzarella or is it mozzarella di bufala? No, it's fior di latte. It's normal mozzarella. Also because the pizza margherita is not made with mozzarella di bufala. It's made with fior di latte. Well, maybe a hot dog pizza is made with mozzarella di bufala. We make the rules here, Eva. Mine? No. <laughs> Mine is made with this. <laughs> So I'm really curious to see what your plan is for assembling this pizza hot dog because- I don't have a plan. You don't have a plan? Like, I don't know if we go, I mean, obviously hot dog in first, but then I don't know, do we do sauce, then potatoes? Before we put some sauce. Then we put our hot dog. 
Now we put our french fries. Then we keep put oh. some sauce again. Okay. Some mozzarella. And now we bake it? Yes, because we need the mozzarella melt. That is maybe the silliest thing I've ever seen you put into an oven. Me too, Albert. Right? It's broken. It's broken? See? I knew we shouldn't have put sauce on the bun. It makes it too soggy. No, it's not too soggy. And now something is happening. Huh. It shouldn't be open on the on both sides. Yeah, but... it uh, kind of broke a little bit. It's I more know. like a it's more like a sandwich. Maybe we finally settled the debate of whether a hot dog is a sandwich or not, because this one definitely is. Also, the cheese didn't quite fully melt. Details. <laughs> <laughs> Small detail. Important is that it's good. It tastes good. Well, we should figure out if that's true or not. We should. Now, I've had some pretty messy hot dogs in my day, but this might take it to the next level. Do you mind if I take the first bite? No, please, I'm happy. <laughs> it's actually not too messy. Here, you try a bite. It's big. <laughs> it's a, it's a to be an big old dog, hot dog. Big. The taste is really good. It tastes delicious. It's actually not very messy. It's not messy. Everything is homemade, except for the blue salad, that's okay. I'm kind of into that. But now we have to move on to our next challenge. A challenge which is totally a surprise and in no way has been spoiled at all. It's the hamburger. You ready to make a burger? I'm ready to make a burger. So I'm gonna need ground beef, ideally that's like 80% lean. We don't write the percentage. Hopefully. You don't? Am I gonna have to eyeball it? See. Si. That looks a little too lean. That looks better. This is pork. Oh, no wonder it looks better. So that's my only option, huh? Or we can have a mix between beef and pork. On a burger? Just a kill, yeah. No, I draw the line there. We're not gonna be that Italian. All right, I'll take this. Okay, so it has to be a cheeseburger. We have a lot of options. What kind of cheese should we go for? In my opinion, we should take a semi-aged pecorino. Pecorino? Okay, I'm down. Do you think it'll melt well? He will, he will not melt completely, but a little bit. I mean, I guess if it works with cacio e pepe. Oh, Can yeah. we do like a um, like a bacon cheeseburger? Can we get bacon? See, si, we can get bacon, but we already need it. So maybe we can go for some good one chop. Okay, I'm very into this idea. Okay, well, since we have guanciale and pecorino cheese, we're already most of the way towards a carbonara burger, so I feel like we should just add some egg and be done with it. crispy guanciale bacon. I guess that means it's time for me to grill. Not having a grill actually maybe is to my benefit in the case of the burger, because it means that I have the opportunity to make a smash burger, which is just unequivocally better than a grilled burger. I'm sorry, you can fight me in the comments below. 
it is just better. Now, this is actually going to be tricky for me because I have to cook the burger while simultaneously cooking a sunny side up egg. And the reason that's tricky is that I'm very bad at timing different things. And also I'm particularly bad at cooking eggs. I'm gonna start by grilling the bun, a little olive oil. Normally I'd use butter, but this is an Italian burger when in Rome. Eat, eat. I'm gonna cook the egg in the leftover guanciale fat because why not? Because when in Rome. Because when in Rome. I have to say one really nice thing about using these homemade buns is that when you cook like a bad store-bought bun, they kind of collapse when you try to toast them. So like, look at that. The center is like cooked just as much as the outside. Well done, Ava. Well done. Good job. Making America proud. Okay, bun's ready. Olive oil. Let's see how we do here. Salt. Plenty of black pepper, because it's a carbonara burger after all. And what about the egg? Cheese. That's too high. There, we'll get our egg going. Salt. Ba ba ba. It's melting. A little bit. Pay attention to the egg. Let's see, it's basically almost done. Should I take it off? Take off the pot, maybe. Everything's fine here. Everything's under control. Well, I really kind of need to take the burger off, but the cheese is. I used too thick of a piece, I think. We can always bake it. <laughs> We just bake everything. <laughs> Grilled American food baked. in the oven, baked. We put our crispy guanciale bacon. I gotta get this egg on here. Do you want help? Yes, actually. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, we did it. We made the carbonara burger. We made the carbonara burger. Now we need to understand if it's good or not. And I'm very excited to find out. Okay, I want you to take the first bite because I want to see you try your first runny egg yolk burger. Can I close it? Yeah, close it. Oh, I, I can smash. You can smash away. Bon appetit. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. This is beautiful. This is a thing of beauty. You want another bite? See, si, Albert. <laughs> See, si, Albert, I was waiting, I was waiting, but yes, I want another bite. Now, I've had some really good burgers in my day. That is legitimately one of the best. It's... Uh... It's amazing. It's a carbonara and a sandwich. It's a carbonara and a sandwich. <laughs> it's a carbonara and a sandwich. So if you are a big fan of a carbonara, make this uh, because it tastes like a very good carbonara. Plus the burger. I'm so, so happy that this came out. And then at the end, the cheese melted with the heat of the... It did. It's all melted now, which is good. We've made a hot dog pizza. We have made a carbonara burger. I think it's time. And we have a little dessert. And I know which dessert you mean. That dessert that tastes like freedom. It tastes like liberty. All right, let's make some Italian s'mores. Do they have graham crackers here? No, actually, we don't have a graham crackers. No graham crackers, okay. So we gotta find a new kind of cookie. I mean, they look kind of basic enough to, to work. They will work. 
We will take these. Over this? Yes, because are they, they are the same, same cookies, oh. but these are better. Okay. And what if we do a double dagger? It's <laughs> more. So it's like a chocolate and vanilla cookie with cream in between. And then we do a marshmallow in between. Okay, let's try this also. We might have to do a few different s'mores. There is always space for s'mores. Oh, that's interesting. So it already has chocolate on it? It's already made though. Where do they keep the marshmallows? We don't have much. No marshmallows? We don't have much. Amazon? <laughs> it's the only way in which we can get some marshmallows. So the thing about the chocolate on a s'more is it needs to be able to kind of melt with the with the hot marshmallow. If you were to pick kind of one basic chocolate for that, what would it be? You should melt. Okay. Now, I kind of feel like we can't really make an Italian s'more without Nutella. The idea of it is very tempting, but I have a better one. Oh, oh. Normally this is not such an easy decision, but Nutella, ciao. So these already have the chocolate built in, so that's basically ready to go. Come to think of it, I don't know why they don't just make graham crackers that already have Hershey's chocolate squares embedded in them. That's kind of a great idea. So, Hershey Graham Crackers uh, Factory, Hershey Factory, copy Italian style. Because these already have kind of a milk cream, I'm assuming, inside, I sort of think that just the normal chocolate should go on those, the milk chocolate. Now here the problem is I don't think that this will melt. Because it's too thick. Well, we're gonna find out. This is for science. So they can substitute the ground crackers. But this needs some science. I guess it's time to cook some marshmallows. Let's go. But I need some fire. So I found these marshmallows on Italian Amazon. It even says, a true American tradition. I'm not a fan of burnt marshmallows. I know some people are. I like mine golden brown. All right, I'm gonna do one on here. You burn it. I actually like them a little burnt. You said before no. Did I? Uh -oh. It's tricky. I have some structural integrity problems with this one. We've got some s'mores, I think. I'm very excited. It's been a while since we've had s'mores. Me too, Harper, because I love them. All right, let's do the Kinder one. Okay, they don't really melt. Buon appetito! <laughs> I could hear how big that bite was. <laughs> you had a lot of layers to go through. There's a lot going on in there. Oh. Maybe. It didn't melt the chocolate, but it's not a problem at all. Well, the cream, I wasn't expecting this. The cream inside these cookies is liquid. I don't know if that's because it melted or is it normally like no, that? No, no, it's normal. That's really good. I thought that those cookies would be, I thought they would be way too hard and they would just squish the whole thing, but it's actually a very light, crispy cookie surrounding that cream filling. 
So you bite through it like nothing. I love it though. It's really good. It's so amazing. It's <laughs> tremendously good. All right, here's our Oro one with the built-in chocolate. So and here is melted. Yeah, the chocolate actually melted here. Bon appetito. Oh my God. Interesting. This one more so than the other one, ironically, has some structural issues. It tastes good, but the cookie is a bit... Um, a little bit too thick. Too though. thick, too hard to bite through, so it kind of becomes a mess. Well, our pistachio one uh, melted quite a bit. Also because you tossed it here, the marshmallow, so I it's really a smoky pistachio. One. Let me know what you think. Mm. Mm. It's missing something. The chocolate apple. The chocolate. <laughs> we miss the chocolate here. Some beautiful thing happens when you mix the chocolate with the marshmallow and it no longer tastes like a normal marshmallow. This tastes like... Marshmallow. Just marshmallow, <laughs> which is not, not that special of a flavor. Maybe if we were going with your idea of the Nutella, it could be better. Yeah, yeah, Arpiri is very tempting, but I have a better one. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed our attempts at some Italian-American, excuse me, American-Italian fusion. Let us know in the comments below what you'll be grilling this summer. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. This is Sanguinacho which is a chocolate pudding made out of pork blood. It is delicious. Trust me, we have a video about it. I'll put a link up there. I'm a vegan Harper. This can work much better than pistachio for us some more. Interesting. Pork blood chocolate pudding s'mores. Okay, let's go find some sanguinaccio. Okay. All right. Ciao. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao. <laughs> molto 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 buono. Sì.